Okay, so we're going to start now doing some very basic JavaScript. And in this lesson, we're going to learn some basic statements and get a little bit familiar with the document object model. So here we have our button again, this button that has appeared in a few lectures. And we're going to add in a paragraph with an ID we'll call my text. So we have the start tag and the end tag, nothing in between. So we just have basically this blank paragraph, but we have an ID so we can refer to it. We have our button. So if we come back here, we can click our button, nothing happens. What we're going to do now is add some JavaScript into the button. I'm going to dump this down onto a couple lines just so it's easier to read. And I'm going to use this attribute on click. This is actually part of HTML, on click, which means when someone clicks the button, do the JavaScript code that's between the quotes. And there's our quotes. So we're going to write some JavaScript code in here. Now, I mentioned the document object model. This is actually its own standard, and it's a way of referring to different parts of an HTML document. It's going to be useful for us to grab text from some areas, put it in other areas. So to do that, we use the word document. That's a predefined term, which is referring to the entire document. And then I need to be able to say, inside the document, go to this part. What we want to do in this example is when someone clicks the button, we're going to show some text in this paragraph that right now doesn't have any text in it. So I want to say, when I click this button, go to this paragraph and add some text. So right now, we'll just have it say hello. So how do I get to this paragraph? How do I say, go change that? There's a few different ways to do it, but we're going to use this command. Sorry. Get element by ID. This is case sensitive, as is everything in JavaScript. So it should be all lowercase except for the first letter of every word after the first one. Document dot get element by ID. And then we have an open parentheses and we put the ID of that element next. So the ID of this paragraph is my text in single quotes, my text. And I'm using single quotes because I have double quotes for the on click. Okay, so now I've gone to the document, I've got the element called my text, and what I want to do is actually set the text of that element equal to the word hello. That uses an attribute, inner.html. I'm going to spread that out. I'm sorry, inner HTML. So that's saying set the HTML in the my text element equal to what comes next. So this is all one big thing document.getElementById my text.innerHTML equals, and then in single court quotes the word hello. Semicolon at the end. So now everything between these double quotes is JavaScript, and we just have one line of JavaScript here. Put the word hello in the HTML of the my text element. And we do that when someone clicks the button. So let's try that. Reload our page here. Click the button, and the word hello appears. That's great. So this is a little more complicated than the alert example that we saw before, but it's getting us to understand the structure a little bit better. So that is how you do get element by ID. Let's do one other thing for looking at the document object model. Let's make a form, and I'm going to put the name is F1. So this is different from IDs. As I mentioned before, you can get elements of the document either way. You can use the ID or the name. So I'm going to show you the alternate model using the name. So I'm going to have form name equals F1. I'm going to have a text field, input, type equals text. And the name of that text field will be age. So I'll say enter your age and have this text box. That BR tag is just a line break. And then I'll have input type equals button. So that alternate kind of button to this one. The value, which is the text on the button, we'll say click here. And we can put an on click in this button as well. So I'm just dropping down a line. On click equals. And then inside the double quotes is where we put our JavaScript. What I'm going to do here is an alert that shows the text that the person typed in the box. 
So we'll alert. And in between these curly braces, I'm going to have code to get the text out of this box. That's going to also use the document object model. So I'm going to say go into the document. But now instead of using get element by ID, I'm going to use this name method. So I go to the document and then I'm going to go to the thing called uh, for this form, which is named F1. So document.f1. Once I'm in the form, I'm going to go to the thing called age. So document.f1.age. And from the age field, I want to get the value. That's the text that's actually in the box. Document.f1.age.value will get the text in that box. And that's it. I'm going to alert it so it will show whatever number I type in the box. Close off my input tag and my form. Okay, if I come back here, I can type in a number, click the button, and it shows whatever I typed in. And that can be anything. It'll just show what's in that box. So that's two different ways to use the document object model to get data into or out of the page. Here we're using the ID, here we're using the form. And you can use these either way. So here I've set this item equal to something else, but I could also get the value out of there and just do an alert with it. So I could say alert the inner HTML of that field. There's nothing there by default though. Uh, but similarly here, instead of alerting what's in the field, I could set document.f1.age.value equal to 21 when they click the button. So if we reload our page, I click the button and 21 appears there. So we can use this as a way to refer to different parts of the document, both to set them equal to other things like we're doing in both cases here, or to get that value and display it like we did with the alert.